Hello, and welcome to For the Love of Nature, a podcast where we tell you everything you need to know about nature, and probably more than you wanted to know. I'm Kim Baker, and it's mini-series time. For those of you just joining us, I'm filling in for a couple of weeks while Laura and Katie take a break and prepare for the next Footlawn season. Throughout this mini-series, we're taking a look at nature near you, taking a closer look at the plants and animals right outside our front door. In today's episode, I thought we should chat about a strong, sturdy staple of the outdoors, our buddy, the tree. Let's jump into it. I never realized I took trees for granted. I mean... I probably should have. I've been listening to and reading The Giving Tree since I was in diapers. And spoiler, that book is all about how much trees give and how much we take without even noticing. Can I read it now without weeping? (laughs) No. I'm old and full of hormones. When I was a kid growing up in the Midwest, trees were a natural playground. I would try to climb any tree that looked like it might be able to hold my weight, much to my parents' chagrin. I was a tree climbing addict. Seriously. One summer, my sister and I spent a week at my grandparents' house. They lived within walking distance of a park, and because my grandparents loved to spoil us, we went every day. And what did I spend hours doing that summer? Not swinging. Not perfecting my monkey bar skills. I was climbing the sprawling tree in the middle of the park. I made up climbing skill levels. Can you hear my finger quotes? and forced my sister to pass the levels and climb higher and higher with me. I was like nine, so we all know it wasn't hard. I think she made it to level 42. The summers were long, but going back to school always happened too fast. And soon after, the days turned cold and windy, the leaves turned and fell, and winter rolled in. Back then, winter wasn't all bad. Again, I was a kid, and we were guaranteed at least one snow day per year. And the Midwest loves a winter activity. Beyond the holiday walks and snow sports, my family liked to clomp around in the snow all winter long. I have this early memory of visiting Waukesha Park, a 22-acre park and natural area near where I grew up, sometime in the middle of winter. We went because a park district group was hosting an educational event. My mom, always up for an educational event. This time, the maple tree was the focus, and they were teaching us how maple syrup is made. Dressed like colorful marshmallows in our 90s-style snowsuits, we walked from station to station. First, we watched someone drill a hole into a maple tree, then tap in a spile, which helps direct the sap out of the tree and into a bucket. Then we moved to the fire pit, where people were boiling the sap down to syrup, Not only did I learn that it takes at least 40 gallons of sap to make one gallon of syrup, which, wild, I also think I got to taste test some of the syrup they made earlier. It was divine. Before I move on, I think it's important to point out that colonists in New England learned how to tap maple trees and its sap's uses from the indigenous groups that lived there. And as people migrated west across the United States, that knowledge followed. From then on, maple trees were my favorite trees. How could you not love a tree that provides you with delicious sticky syrup for your pancakes and waffles? If you need more convincing, and I know you don't because I've sold you on maple syrup, but we're doing a nature podcast here. Let me give you the skinny on the not-so-skinny maple tree. Acer is the genus name for 132 species of trees and a couple of shrubs that are known commonly as maples. Most of these species are native to Asia, the most well-known is the Japanese maple, while some can be found in Europe, Northern Africa, and North America. And only one species, Acer pseudoplantinus, that's right, has ventured down to the Southern Hemisphere. Most maples top out at 33 to 148 feet tall and have a distinct leaf shape. I think it looks like a little leaf hand, but apparently the better way to describe it is, quote, three to nine veins, each leading to a lobe, end quote. And one of those lobes is the main lobe. The maple leaf I'm most familiar with has pointed ends and semi-ragged edges. For a great visual, check out the Canadian flag. 
I don't mean to generalize, but Canadians love maples. Maples bear fruit, which are called samaras, but are better known to the Midwestern kids as helicopters. The seed is encased in a little house called a nutlet, which is attached to flat, papery tissue. They're designed to spin as they fall, which makes it easier for them to fall or fly a great distance, or it makes for a good outside game. Fun fact, in World War II, the U.S. Army used the maple seed as an inspiration for an airdrop supply carrier. Now, as I mentioned, Canadians love maples. For them, it's a symbol of endurance and strength, and it's on their flag and military regalia, and the name of one of their hockey teams, the Toronto Maple Leafs. I wasn't making it up. Finland also has the maple leaf and Samaras on a coat of arms. People use the maple in a variety of ways. It's an ornamental tree on their property and in landscaping. A few species are popular in bonsai, which is a Japanese art form in cultivating and shaping mini trees. It's beautiful, and I don't have the patience or fine motor skills for it. They're also used for timber, smoking meat, making whiskey, and creating musical instruments. And we can't forget fall colors. If you hit them at their peak, maples have showy, colorful leaves that range from golden yellow to deep crimson. And sometimes all of those colors are on the same tree. In fact, there was this gigantic maple tree on my college campus that, without fail, would turn kind of this bright yellow gold every fall. I loved it so much, and I would take the long way to class just to walk past it. Since I moved to the South the better part of nine years ago, I haven't gotten to see the beauty of maple leaves in fall or taste test fresh syrup in a long, long time. The clear shift from summer to autumn is something I desperately miss about the Midwest, and it's not quite the same down here. Sure, it doesn't get nearly as cold in the South, but the fall colors are muddied, and you can't find a good apple orchard or corn maze anywhere. Did that sound too Northern? You're welcome. However, I'm very much looking forward to my backpacking adventure this month with my buddy Leah. Remember her? We talked trails with her last season. You should check out that episode if you haven't. And if all goes according to plan, when you're listening to this, I should be hiking somewhere in Minnesota, don't you know? I can't wait to see the maples again. Even if they're not turning colors yet, I'm so excited to hike among them and think about this underappreciated tree that gives us so much. If you want to learn more about the fascinating world of trees, check out our The Trees Know episode from all the way back in season one, plus the hilarious episode art that our bug guy Josh drew. And the next time you're outside or looking out a window at a tree, take a moment to appreciate the homes it holds for animals and the many things us humans use it for. I'm not saying you have to be a tree hugger, But I'm also saying that hugging a tree never hurt anyone. Unless it's full of poison ivy. Please use discretion. All right, friends. That's all for this episode. Until next time. Bye.